So next question, why do you think sensitivity reading has become more popular? And she says, the demand is definitely growing and more mainstream publishing companies are getting in touch with me now. Mainstream? I think authors don't want to publish a book and then find themselves in a Twitter storm or realize through Amazon reviews that they've gotten something massively wrong. I'm I'm just I'm just a more specialized editor as maybe the editor doesn't have the background I do. I mean you're not going into de- she's not going into detail about it that's the thing. So the vice goes on and asks are the edits the telegraph piece states the kinds of changes a sensitive sensitivity reader would normally suggest. She says I can't be sure about them all. I mean, there were a lot of edits and a lot of changes. Without having been part of the process, it's very hard to tell. So it's a freaking non-answer. So he says, what, what do you think of the changes made? And she says, I can't be 100% sure, but from what I saw, most of the changes looked fairly streamlined. They were changes that if I was rereading the books now, I wouldn't notice. I saw some people saying that some changed the meaning, but I didn't see much of that. Most of what I saw was pretty reasonable. So it's just political correctness, really, is what it boils down to. It's just language. What type of language? That's what I'm getting from this. Just what kind of language is considered politically correct for the time? Now, the problem with that, you're dealing with something that's like the Overton window. Okay, the Overton window, if you guys are familiar. So it's like it's something in it's like has to do with like political science and stuff like that in this instance. So like the Overton window to kind of like sum it up, it's like moving the goalpost. What is considered politically correct years ago may now be considered politically incorrect in this day and age. There was a time in history when the term retard for example when the term retard was a used as a clinical term it was a clinical term and it was defined in a clinical sense that was the actual clinical term for talking about a specific type of disability or neurological disorder but now it's considered politically incorrect to use that term. And then they've had a different term. And then that term was considered politically incorrect. You see what I'm saying here? It's just like the shit, it just keeps going and going. Like people's, it's it all has to deal with people's sensibilities. Appealing to people's sensibilities. And the more sensitive people become to a certain term, because language can be altered too. Like people, and it's very much a... Um, something that happens through, um, you know, in a liberal sense, they, uh, the, the liberal mindset does like to do a lot of what they call redefining language. They redefine language constantly. Instead of just sticking to dictionary definitions, there's always like turning, you know, there's slang terms for, for words or turning words that that were or you or using words as slurs when when the words themselves were never originally meant to be used in a pejorative sense so that's what causes this political correct correctness slippery slope argument so then you know we're constantly like revising language And now when you get into the realm of like how that affects literature, and that's what we're getting with the rise of this, uh, what seems like this sensitivity reader stuff. So the sensitivity reader stuff has to do with revising what I can see just based on this article is it has to do with revising language. Instead of saying this, instead of saying this, why don't you say that? Instead of it calling it this, why don't you call it that? But being an author, sometimes you have to use 
very, sometimes you are, or more often than not, if you're a good writer, you're using very specific language. You're using very specific language on purpose. Whether it be to create atmosphere or whether it be to really hammer home a particular tone in your work. So I think that's why some people look at the Roll Doll stuff and they're like, look, you guys, changing the word fat, changing the word fat and saying hefty or calling them big boned or something. You know, sure, the same sentiment, the sentiment, the sentiment of the text remains the same, but it, it may not have the same punch as it did before is I think really is what the point of the people who are kind of up in arms about what the revisionists are doing to the work. Plus it's not even the original work anymore. You're changing it. It's not the author's, that's not the author's words. That's somebody else's words. In other words, you're putting words in the author's mouth at that point. So then somebody who goes back and they read Roald Dahl's, one of Roald Dahl's work, with these new revisions, they may think to themselves, oh, Roald Dahl was one of those politically correct folks. When in all actuality, he wasn't, at least according to the standard, the, you know, the, the standard, you know, at least according to the standard of the Overton window and the current zeitgeist, you know, there's that aspect of looking at it. And this isn't throwing any shade at that one woman who participated in here because she did make it very clear that it's not her. I mean, she's making suggestions as an individual who's reading the book. She's just a woman. You know what I mean? Women are sensitive as it is. Women get in their feelings and their emotions all the time. This is what women do. A lot of this politically correct business that we're dealing with nowadays is because women are involved in politics. I mean, let's just, you know, call a spade a spade. As far as that goes, a lot of the political correctness crap that we're dealing with nowadays is because women are involved in politics and because women are emotional. They are very sensitive. They they do get in their feelings. But then there's the men, you know, there's the liberal men as well, the effeminate men that that kind of uh, echo that same sentiment doesn't help matters at all uh, uh, as well. See, I come from the standpoint like if you can't take the heat. You know, maybe it's time you get out of the kitchen as far as that goes. You know, you can't be going around. We can't be going around censoring uh, people's artwork, you know, because once you start doing that, then it just becomes slippery slope. You know, what's acceptable? To, like I said, it's the Overton window. Look it up. I'll look it up right now just to make sure I'm not. I'll look it up right now. Make sure I'm not talking out of my ass. The Overton window is an approach to identifying the ideas that define the spectrum of acceptability of governmental governmental policies. It says politicians can act only within the acceptable range. Shifting the Overton window involves proponents of policies outside the window, persuading the public to expand the window or move the window. So in other words, what I'm saying here is when you start perpetuating this sensitivity reader nonsense, okay, where you want to police people's language, basically it's just an opinion. It's just some asshole's opinion really is what it boils down to. But if you're, but in other words, if you're giving cachet to that, you're giving it weight and you're saying that's a that's a legitimate profession that deserves respect. You are part of the problem at that point. And what you are doing, maybe without your own fucking knowledge of doing it, is you are shifting that political Overton window. You say you're 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 on board with what is considered socially acceptable speech or politically correct speech within whatever, within art, we'll say, for this example, because we're talking about books, okay? So what is considered ex so politically correct and socially acceptable language in that medium? 
So then what that does, is it shifts the Overton window. Once you hit a critical mass of people that are on board with that nonsense, it shifts the Overton window and it then allows legislators, it then allows politicians and bureaucrats to kind of enact policies or put forth policies that pertain to whatever it is that you guys are perpetuating. And in this case, sensitivity readers and policing language, you see? So it's almost like when you shift that Overton window, you are kind of opening the back door, if you will. You're opening that back door just a crack for politicians and bureaucrats to kind of sneak in through the back door and slip in some kind of free speech policing type of policies and legislation, if you will, or regulation, you know, in worst case scenarios. So just something to think about. You know, you guys tell me what you think. You think I'm way off base here? You know, you think I'm making a point? Do you think I'm I'm kind of creating an argument uh, for, the, for this? Like, what do you think? You know, the conversation continues. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say on it.